Hi everyone, it's Rishi here, and today we're going to be talking about the pulmonary hyla and the structures that make up each hilum. If you remember from a previous video, a hilum is the part of an organ where the vessels enter and exit. And the pulmonary hyla are a common source of confusion, not only for residents starting out, but even for attendings, because there's many structures represented in the hyla, and they're all superimposed on each other but knowing the anatomy will help us sort out normal from abnormal. One important thing to keep in mind about the structures of the hyla is our rules about the silhouette signs still apply here. So what I mean by that is that the structures that we're able to see in the hyla are visible because they're next to other structures of a different density. For this video, I have a normal chest x-ray here, and we have the normal corresponding chest CT that we're going to use to help us figure out why the things that we see are visible. Okay, so let's jump right in and first take a look at the right hilum. Alright, let's start out with the right hilum by zooming up a little bit so we could see the structures a little bit better. And here we have our corresponding CT, which we're going to zoom in a little bit also. Okay, so the right hilum has this characteristic boomerang shape and the inferior part of this boomerang, this part, is the opacity that contributes the most to the hilum, and it's the right interlobar pulmonary artery. So this artery divides off and supplies the middle and lower lobes. And if we were to look at the corresponding CT, this is the main pulmonary artery. It divides off into the right side. This goes up into the right upper lobe, and this right here is the right interlobar pulmonary artery. And you could see why we could see it on the chest x-ray is that it is right next to uh, normal lung. So this is our manifestation of the silhouette sign here. Here we have normal lung and right next to it the water density of the artery. Okay, um, so the superior part of this boomerang thing is this structure right here and that is the right superior pulmonary vein. Okay, so let's go back to our CT, and we can look at this structure right here. Okay, so this is the right superior pulmonary vein. And again, it is right next to the normal lung, and that's why we could see it on chest x-ray. And just to prove it to you, I'm going to trace it back, and it goes into this structure right here, which is the ostium of the right superior pulmonary vein, and here is the left atrium. Okay, so those two structures make up the sort of outermost part of this kind of boomerang shaped structure. Okay, the right interlobar pulmonary artery and the uh, right superior pulmonary vein. And the angle that they form is called the right hilar angle. Okay, this is called the right hilar angle and it should normally be this nice little divot in the hilum. All right, now let's see if we can identify some more vessels. So if we look medially in the hilum, we could see that there's this border right here, and this is the truncus anterior. So this is part of the pulmonary artery that supplies the right upper lobe. So if we go to the corresponding CT, we could see that's it right there. Okay, so this is the truncus anterior supplying the apical and anterior segments of the right upper lobe. There's a separate branch that goes off into the posterior segment of the right upper lobe. So we have two vessels that course superiorly here in the right hilum, the truncus anterior medially and the right superior pulmonary vein laterally. Now how about the bronchi? So the bronchi are seen not as opacities, remember, but lucencies. So this is the trachea. This is the right main bronchus. And then um, in the right hilum, we could see part of the right upper lobe bronchus coming off. And then this larger structure going inferiorly is the bronchus intermedius. Okay, so let's look at that on the CT. So here's the trachea. There's the carina. There's the right main bronchus. There's the right upper lobe bronchus, and then there's the bronchus intermedius. So the bronchus intermedius, remember, gives rise to the middle and lower lobes, and 
um, just lateral to that is the interlobar pulmonary artery. So there's our interlobar pulmonary artery, bronchus intermedius. Okay, and then there's another bronchus that we can see inconsistently, but we can see it on this case, and that is the right upper lobe anterior segment. So that comes as a ring shadow right here in the hilum, and if we scroll forward, we could see that structure. There it is. That is the anterior segmental right upper lobe bronchus. Okay, to summarize, we have the right interlobar pulmonary artery, right superior pulmonary vein, truncus anterior, right main bronchus, right upper lobe bronchus, bronchus intermedius, and hilar angle. And that pretty much takes care of the right hilum. So now let's take a look at the left hilum. Okay, so the left hilum, it doesn't have that boomerang shape that the right hilum does. The left hilum, I like to think of as a hockey stick where you have a large part that just juts out and then a large part that goes down. And that first large part that juts out, that makes up the majority of the opacity in the left hilum, and that is the left pulmonary artery. And there are a couple branches that we can see from the left pulmonary artery. The larger one that goes down is the interlobar pulmonary artery. And then this medial superior one that goes up is the apical branch of the upper lobe pulmonary artery. All right, now let's see if we can identify those structures on the corresponding CT. So I'm going to go to mediastinal windows and scroll back. And this is the main pulmonary artery. So it bifurcates into the right and left pulmonary arteries. And this is the left pulmonary artery. If I keep going forward here, that is the interlobar pulmonary artery. And then this part that goes up is the apical branch of the pulmonary artery. Okay, so left pulmonary artery, interlobar, and apical branch. Left pulmonary artery, interlobar pulmonary artery, and apical branch. Now there's another vessel that we could see right here and it is located just lateral to this apical branch of the pulmonary artery and this is the vein. This is part of the superior pulmonary vein and if I scroll go back up this is that structure right here. So this is the left superior pulmonary vein and it's located just lateral to the apical branch of the pulmonary artery. Now there are some bronchi that we could see as well. So if we go back to the trachea again, there's the left main uh, bronchus, okay, and that continues on and goes to the left lower lobe bronchus. And then we could see a branch coming off here, and that is the left upper lobe bronchus. Okay, so if we go to the CT, we have the left main and then that continues on into the left lower lobe going down and then the part that goes up is this left upper lobe bronchus. Alright, so to summarize the left hilum we have the left pulmonary artery, the apical branch of the left pulmonary artery, the interlobar pulmonary artery, the left superior pulmonary vein, the left main bronchus, the left lower lobe bronchus, and the left upper lobe bronchus. And that pretty much covers the major anatomy you're going to be seeing in the pulmonary hyla on a frontal chest radiograph. I'm going to talk more about the hyla in another video when I discuss the lateral chest radiograph. But I want to stress that the hyla are a difficult area and if the patient is rotated or if they breathe then that makes interpreting the hyla even more difficult. But hopefully knowing some of the normal structures and the normal anatomy will put you on good footing for interpreting these studies. If you'd like to read more about the hyla, I recommend picking up this book if you don't already have it. It's Webb's Thoracic Imaging. Chapter 6 is all about the pulmonary hyla. If you have any questions about this video, please feel free to email me. You could also direct message me on the About page of this YouTube channel or leave a comment below. Thanks!